Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nitin Choda and welcome to this important episode of Ignition Time. Thank you so much for being a viewer. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. I want you to know that I sincerely appreciate you. If you don't know anything about me, please check out my video. You'll learn more about who I am, what my journey has been like and why you should listen to me. If you learn something new from this video, please consider clicking the like button. Please subscribe, please enable notifications. That's your vote of support for us. That really helps out the YouTube algorithm. And I would sincerely appreciate that. Let's just jump right in. Now, the US GDP numbers, the gross domestic product numbers, you're probably thinking, what does that have to do with me? It actually has a lot to do with you. Here's why. Even though the GDP numbers represent something, the fact is they can be spun a certain way if you don't really understand what's going on behind the scenes. Let's get into the spin aspect of all of this before I get into the actual numbers. On your screen, you'll see a tweet from the President of the United States today and the President said, GDP number just announced, biggest and best in the history of our country and not even close. Uh, next year will be fantastic. However, sleepy Joe Biden and his proposed record setting tax increase would kill it all. So glad this great GDP number came out before November 3rd. Now, let me uh, give my viewers and subscribers some information that you may not even be aware of. Even if taxes go up for individuals making $400,000 a year, the total amount of tax collected by the United States government is not going to substantially increase. And if you want me to explain this in a little bit more detail, I can in another video. But the fact is that as taxes go up, the ultra rich, the ultra wealthy who have a whole team of advisors, who have a whole team of accountants, who know how to invest in real estate, who know how to legally take advantage of tax shelters will indeed start doing that. So this whole, you know, this whole sort of a conversation, whether it's from the president's side on, you know, lowering income taxes for the middle class, whether it's from former Vice President Joe Biden's side, you know, raising taxes on the rich. By the way, it sounds good, right? Let's raise taxes on the rich. Let's get them all. You know, they're bad. Let's get them all. Let's make them pay their share. I mean, if there's a rich guy here with lots and lots of money and he pays his share of taxes, that's a great message for the voter. The voter is like, yeah, let's get them, those horrible people. But the truth of the matter is, fundamentally, here, here's the bottom line. Fundamentally, GDP is driven by how we make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. Are you going to go out to eat? on the weekend? Uh, are you going to shop online? You know, are you going to buy that new pair of jeans? Are you going to buy some nice shoes? Are you going to get that nice car? Are you going to get the next iPhone? These are the things that fundamentally govern GDP. You know, are you going to spend more money locally? You know, are you going to always shop for stuff on sale? Or are you going to just go out there and spend more money? These are the things that really drive GDP. And speaking of positioning, speaking of the overall approach, you know, towards all this and the overall spin towards all this. Uh, this was a comment from everyone's favorite uncle, Uncle Kudlo, Uncle Larry Kudlo. How are you, Mr. Kudlo? He's the White House Chief Economic Advisor. On your screen, you'll see a tweet from Jeff Stein over at the Washington Post. And Jeff said, White House's Senior Economic Advisor Larry Kudlo said this, uh, as far as the GDP numbers are concerned. He said, it's a strong, strong economy, the V-shaped concept. I coined a while back looking pretty good right now. First of all, the V-shaped recovery, it's not a concept, it's a common economic theory. That's number one. Number two, this is not a V-shaped recovery. I've been saying this for months on my channel before you heard any politician say it. this is a K-shaped recovery. Individuals at the top of the K are individuals who can work remotely, who have higher education levels, who are higher wage earners. They are the ones who have already recovered because, you know, for them, there's been literally no impact. But the individuals at the bottom of the K, the low wage earners, individuals with a high school diploma or lower, individuals who are in travel, entertainment, leisure, hospitality, they are the ones who have been significantly impacted. So what does all of this, what does all of this information have to do with the actual GDP numbers? On your screen, you'll see an article that was published today. As always, we'll provide you with a link to all our articles in the description section below so you can check out those resources and read them and analyze them yourself. The headline of this article reads, US economy recoups two thirds of the ground lost in the first half of the year. So the GDP rose by a record 7.4% in the third quarter. This is a significant reversal from the historic and devastating second quarter plunge of 9%. Now I want to be clear, 
Um, there are two ways to spin things. I mean, you can obviously say, whoa, this looks amazing. But the fact is, it looks amazing because it was drastically, drastically down in the prior quarter. You can say, oh gosh, you know, we're turning the corner and we're fine. But then, you know, the fact is that cases are increasing throughout the country. You know, you can say, oh gosh, you know, V-shaped recovery, not my words, you know, Larry Kudlow's words. You know, but the fact is, you know, millions and millions of individuals are on unemployment. Fiscal stimulus is badly, badly needed. And, you know, you don't even have to take my word for it. Before I show you an opinion from economic experts that were actually interviewed uh, this morning, and I'll show you that segment and you'll hear from different economic experts. Let's take a look at this chart on your screen that shows you the quarterly US GDP adjusted for inflation. You can see that in the second quarter, the GDP dropped substantially. And then in the third quarter, it jumped back up. So relative to the previous quarter, it looks excellent. But we are still, we are still worse off than we were before this pandemic began. And that is the thing uh, where, you know, where, <laughs> where politicians or the administration will spin it a certain way. So for the 1% of you who are going to freak out about uh, the way I'm positioning this, well, I'm presenting you with data. For me, it's not about the red or the blue. It's about the red, white and blue. I'm not Democrat. I'm not Republican. I'm American. And speaking of spin, you'll see a tweet on your screen from Jeff Steiner, the Washington Post. He was quoting Senator Rick Scott from Florida. This is what Rick Scott said on the GDP numbers. He said, you can see people are getting back to work. They're being able to put food on the table, pay rent, buy their cars. So I have a question for my viewers and subscribers. Are you able to get food on the table, pay rent and buy your cars? Not my words, the words of uh, Rick Scott from Florida. Are you able to put food on the table, pay rent and buy your cars? Just let me know in the comment section below if you're able to put food on the table, pay rent and buy your cars. Oh yeah, yes, I'm thinking what you're thinking. Here's another tweet on your screen from Heather Long at the Washington Post and she said, we all know this, but seeing the data here is pretty stark. Americans still are not spending anywhere close to what they were spending on services. In healthcare, spending is down 6%. That's $131 billion from a year ago. In restaurants, spending is down 19%. That's $165 billion down from a year ago. Transportation down 23%. I can't even remember the last time I used Uber or Lyft. I don't even know if the app still works on my phone because I have auto update turned off. Too many updates on too many apps. Recreation down 32%, down $160 billion from a year ago. Here's another tweet on your screen from Heather Long. The US economy is smaller than it was a year ago. In the third quarter of 2019, the US economy was at $19.1 trillion. Then it went to 19.3, then 19, then 17.3. And now we are at $18.6 trillion. The economy has recovered 62% of its losses and remains 3% lower than where it was a year ago. So we are getting back, but these are by no means record numbers. These are essentially recovery numbers. Now you can, uh, you know, you can, you can es essentially analyze this any which way you want. As you can expect, former Vice President Joe Biden chimed in as well. On your screen, you'll see a tweet from former Vice President Joe Biden. GDP rose last quarter, but visits to food banks have not slowed and poverty has grown. We are on track for the worst economic downturn in over 70 years. And Donald Trump is on track to be the first president since Herbert Hoover to leave office with less jobs than when he came in. Pretty explosive uh, comments from former Vice President Joe Biden. And here's a tweet on your screen from Jeff Stein. And Jeff said that uh, the Joe Biden advisor, former Vice President Joe Biden advisor, Jared Bernstein, uh, said this on CNBC today. One of the things I'm finding really disconcerting is hearing some folks in the administration talking about mission accomplished, roaring economy. You heard that from the president. You heard that from the White House senior economic advisor, Larry Kudlow. And uh, you also heard uh, signs of, uh, of, I guess, uh, recovery uh, from Rick Scott from Florida. So uh, this is what uh, this is what uh, was said. One of the things I'm finding really disconcerting is hearing some folks in the administration talking about mission accomplished, roaring economy. This is an economy with recessionary conditions for many of the people in it. And this is indeed a K-shaped recovery. That indeed is the truth of the matter. Speaking of the truth of the matter, uh, earlier today, CNBC interviewed three experts on what you know what they thought about the GDP numbers keep in mind we're coming off the worst 
quarter in history, but the economy did grow at its fastest pace ever in the third quarter. But the truth is the nation is still dealing with this uh, with this pandemic and there are new cases all over the country. So three experts were interviewed on CNBC today. One expert was Michelle Girard, who's the chief US economist at NatWest Markets. The second expert is Stephanie Kelton, professor of economics and public policy at Stony Brook University. And the third expert is Michael Strain, director of economic policy studies at the American Enterprise Institute. They were on CNBC this morning to discuss. Let's hear what they had to say. Let's roll the tape. In terms of what you'd been anticipating, this number, uh, as Rick mentioned, maybe a little bit weaker than the whisper number, but certainly better than the consensus. You know, that whisper number really, it was increased uh, in part because of the strong durable goods numbers, which is business investment. So that's good, but also because of trade, where you actually have this situation where because we had a big rebound in demand and imports were stronger, the trade deficit widened. I, I think stepping back from the data that I have seen, the trends that, that we were expecting were there. Strength in consumer spending, strong rebounds in housing and business investment. Of course, you see the weakness ongoing when you look at non-residential investment, when you look at state and local government spending. I, I think I would just echo what was said by Rick, which is that it may look like a V because you're up 33 percent after being down 31. But but it's not. You're still not you know back to where you were before the virus hit. And quite honestly, we don't think you're going to be back at that level probably well into 2021. Yeah, Stephanie, the other added part of this is, you know, these numbers, again, are backward looking and we are seeing an increase in COVID cases. A lot of questions about what's going to happen to the economy under that scenario, whether we see people deciding to, to not go back out and whether that hurts the economy or whether we've gotten a little better at managing this. What do you think? I think that, you know, the, the evidence is pretty clear. We are in the midst of a, of a spike in terms of the virus. I think that, you know, the, the likely um, result of that is that we are going to see perhaps localized, but we're going to see more uh, lockdowns as hospitals get overwhelmed and mayors and governors are forced to do what they need to do to manage the healthcare system and to try to keep people safe in their cities and states. So I think you're going to see this undulating sort of, um, you know, shift across the country as the virus moves through and uh, policymakers respond. And as you said, consumers respond, because as long as people remain concerned about their health and safety, going out and getting back to normal, um, they're going to essentially vote with their feet and businesses are going to see uh, that reflected in terms of, you know, the lack of customers coming through their stores. Michael, how, how are you looking at the GDP number, not only the GDP number, but also jobless claims, which are pretty important too? Well, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it in, in, in a couple of ways. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think about what this means for, for policy. And a GDP number around what we got, you know, a lot of this growth, my guess, uh, was uh, earlier in the quarter when the CARES Act provisions, the uh, more generous unemployment insurance, the payments to households, the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, were helping to support the economy. Just given the kind of mechanics of the way GDP is, is calculated, and there's really no need to, to go into this, but if you, if you really plunge in the month of April in the second quarter, and then recover quickly in the months of uh, in the month of May and the month of June. You know that's all second quarter stuff. You could get you could get a real good third quarter number and not see a whole lot of uh, uh, of, of improvement. Uh, but so so I think a lot of what we saw is the reopening certainly, um, but uh, but was was fiscal policy was was the CARES Act. Um, and my big concern is that a lot of those provisions have expired. The Paycheck Protection Program expired in August. Uh, a lot of the uh, uh, income support for households expired in July. Um, and so I think that this really suggests, you know, A, that the CARES Act was a, was a success, but B, that the absence of fiscal policy support, especially given that we are looking at a resurgence, uh, we're looking at a situation where, where you know, the, the, in some respects, at least the worst of the virus may, may be yet to come, we really need more fiscal policy support. And when you look at when you look kind of into the details of the report, you look at the contributions to GDP. No surprise, big contribution from consumer spending. The government helped consumers. Uh, uh, state and local government spending contributed uh, negatively. There was a negative growth contribution, which to me suggests that we really need to be 
to be helping states and localities. That's it, everybody. That's a comprehensive analysis of the new GDP numbers. As always, you'll find a link in the description section below to all our resources. If you learn something new from this video, please consider clicking the like button. Please also ignite that notification button after you click the subscribe button. This way you'll get instant updates from our channel going forward. Also, please share this video with friends and family. Your vote of confidence in us is you sharing this video with friends and family. Thank you so much for watching everybody. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time. If you don't know anything about me, please check out my video. You'll learn more about who I am, what my journey has been like and why you should listen to me. If you learn something new from this video, please consider clicking the like button. Please ignite the subscribe button because the name of our channel is Ignition Time and please, please enable notifications so you get instant updates from our channel going forward. Now remember, we release videos at 2 p.m. East Coast time most days of the week. That's 2 p.m. You can get your cell phone out, send a text message with the word ignition or with the word time to 70,000. That's 70000. You'll get added to SMS alerts list. You can opt out of the SMS alerts at any point in time going forward. Now, you can also get added to our email list. Simply go to ignitiontime.com forward slash alerts. That's ignitiontime.com forward slash alerts. And you'll get added to our email list. You can opt out of the SMS list or the email list at any point in time that you want. No worries about that. Please follow us on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is ignition underscore time. That's ignition underscore time. You'll get exclusive news and breaking alerts on Instagram. Speaking of breaking alerts, you can also get those on Twitter and you can get those in real time. In fact, so follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is also ignition underscore time. That's ignition underscore time. And finally, keep in mind that YouTube does not always release notifications on time. So simply bookmark youtube.com forward slash ignition time. That's youtube.com forward slash ignition time and then you can visit the home page of our channel and watch any of our videos at any point in time that you want. If you learn something new from this video, please consider sharing this video with friends and family members. You sharing the video will be your vote of confidence in us and all the effort that goes into this channel behind the scenes. You'll find the link in the description section below to all our resources so you can dig deeper and, and analyze that content for yourself. Uh, once again, please comment below because you commenting on our videos allows, allows you the opportunity to engage with our growing community, to interact with our community because our community is something that we're extremely proud of. It's, it's a highly intelligent, highly respectful community and we are all deep thinkers here because we all want to know what's going on underneath the surface. Finally, please click like. Once again, please subscribe. Please enable notifications. Again, that would be your vote of confidence in us. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>